Today, you're gonna to learn how to create and publish your very own NPM package. Before we begin, this video sponsor is Linode and they make it easy and affordable to host your site, app, or service on whatever technology stack you use. Unlike entry-level hosting services, Linode is a step up to powerful, fast, fully configurable cloud computing. With server plans starting at just $5 plus no hidden fees or surprise outages, Linode offers a no-nonsense hosting at a price you can afford. So sign up now using the link below to get a $20 credit on your new Linode account. Hey everyone, what's up? Gary Simon of Corsetra.com. So today we're gonna be taking a look at how to create your very own NPM package. Now, what is that? So if you're at all familiar with JavaScript and you followed some of my other tutorials in the past, you've probably used Node Packages. And NPM is short for Node Package Manager. And basically what they are, they're, uh, they're packages or they're little scripts or libraries that other people, other developers have created to make your life easier in your own projects based on your needs so you, you don't have to write and do everything from scratch on your own. So how do you create one of those? Well, that's what we're gonna focus on today. So the example that we're gonna be using is is, let's say for instance you're a bad designer in particular you really suck at creating shadows or box shadows right well uh, that's what our little library is going to accommodate as you can see there's no uh, shadows on here but when I enable our little package for this project right here and save and then refresh real quick we can see we have our little soft shadows we even have padding so that's what our little library is going to do and let me show you real quickly what this looks like in action so we're importing it and then we have our shadow wizard and we have our object of options here so yes you can see shadow type is soft maybe we'll change this to hard all right so we have options as you can see padding let's make that false and we'll go back to soft very exciting stuff it's you know a very silly sort of example nobody's going to use this of course but i uh, you know just for this short tutorial to, to keep things uh, you know as quick as possible we're gonna you know keep it to a minimum all right so make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and let's get started all right so the first thing you want to do is create an npm account if you don't yet have one so you go to npmjs.com forward slash sign up and you put your full name, your public email, and your username and password. Remember that username and password, you'll need it in a second. And then just create your account. You're also gonna wanna verify your email, otherwise you won't be able to publish your package to NPM. It'll warn you in the console. So after you do those two things, we can go ahead and then go to our console here. And then you're gonna run, want to run the following commands here. So let's get this a little bit bigger. And we're just going to type in npm add user, and it's going to ask you for the username, uh, the password that you specified just previously, and also an email address. And then it will, you know, tie that user to the, your currently logged in, uh, your 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 npm on your machine. Uh, so I'm going to exit out of here because I already did this. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and create a new folder for our package or our project here. So Make dir, I'm gonna call this shadow izzard, <laughs> I guess. And then we'll CD into shadow izzard, shadow wizard. Okay, and so I uh, at this point, we'll go ahead and just start working on the actual uh, code. So we're going to, uh, let's see here, code period, and that will open up the code editor, Visual Studio Code. And we're gonna create an index.js file. All right, so what we'll do is just define uh, a regular JavaScript function for this. So we're just gonna say function, we'll call it uh, shadow wizard here, and we're gonna allow people to pass in um, two parameters or through an options object. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get all the images that uh, have a class attached to them. So a part of the requirement for using this plugin will, or this library, is that people can put a class on each image that they want to add this shadow effect to. And it doesn't even have to be an image, it could be anything really. So we'll say let images equals document.query selector all, and we'll say shadow wizard, just like that. So after that, we're going to check the options. All right, so we have two options. One is, and these are just, this is, like I said before, this is a silly concept. Uh, I just wanted to demonstrate, you know, how you can pass in options to your your uh, your package. So we'll say if 
options. And if one option uh, will be shadow type. So by default, the shadow, the box shadow that we're gonna have is gonna be um, really soft shadow. So it's a wide blur radius of like 15 pixels. If they don't want that and they want a hard shadow, maybe you have zero, zero pixels, then it could specify in the options and the parameters, shadow type equals hard. So we'll say shadow type hard. So if it's hard, then we can say options.shadow type equals zero pixels. So we're putting in an actual value and you'll see how we'll use this in a second. So we'll say else, if it's anything else, uh, if they omit it, uh, if they choose not to you know, specify it, um, if it's anything else, it's going to be options.shadow type equals 15 pixels. All right, so now let's go through uh, a for each from our images up top. So images for each, so we'll say image. So now we have access to each image that it finds uh, through document uh, query selector all. And we can just add a style to it. So image.style. And now we have access to, why did it do that? That's annoying, style. And then box shadow. So now we have access to the CSS properties that we can um, update in JavaScript. So one thing to note, technically in CSS, the uh, property for box shadow is box hyphen shadow, but you don't do that. You use this camel case here uh, for anything that has a hyphen. So box shadow equals, so now we can say 10 pixels uh, from the X and Y. And then also this is where we put in our options shadow. So we're using back ticks so we can easily just reference the variable or property this way. So options dot shadow type rather right there. And then we'll say uh, one pixel for the spread and then RGBA zero, 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 and then that's the uh, that's black right there, and then for the opacity, 0.12. So it's just a soft, very light shadow that will be applied. All right. So also we're going to have a second option called padding. So if they want to have padding, okay, we'll say if options stop padding, and it's a boolean value. So if it's true, then we'll say image dot style dot padding equals 1 EM, sorry about that. All right, so by default, it's gonna be false. Um, but if they choose to say true in, in, the, in the options, it's gonna add a 1 EM padding to the images or whatever they place this shadow wizard <laughs> class onto. And that's it for our code. That's, that's all it is, except one final thing. We're gonna do module.exports.shadowizard equals shadow wizard. All right, so that's how they'll be able to import it into their project. All right, so now that we have this done, let's go ahead and go to GitHub uh, and github.com. So I'm going, to, I'm going to assume, oh, one second, I have my incognito window open here. Let me just open this up. There we go, github.com. I'm gonna assume you already have a GitHub account. Uh, if not, go ahead and create one, it's free. We're gonna add a new repo. We'll call this Shadow Wizard. I uh, description, whatever you want it to be public. And I uh, let's create the, re the repo. We don't need, we don't need to initialize it with a readme. We're going to create our own. All right. So here's our instructions here. We're going to follow them almost to a T. Uh, let's close this out real quickly. So what we want to do um, before we add our index, we want to add a readme file into this folder right here. So let's add a readme. And that readme markdown file is what displays like I uh, on GitHub in this section right here. So you definitely want to have it if you're going to be having any type of serious package that you want people to use. So for the markdown, uh, very simple. Uh, if you don't, if you're not familiar with markdown uh, templating and, and you know syntax, uh, you can go ahead and just Google that. But for you know a, a, a caption or a heading right here. What is this? Get perfect shadows every time for the non-designer. Uh, you usually have an installation. That's the one thing people are always gonna wanna see. So we'll say installation here. And then we'll say, if you wanna show code, we can see use the back tick. So npm i shadow wizard. 
save as a dev dependency. By the way, you can also take this index.js and you can just take this code alone without this module exports and you can host it on a CDN and that will give people who aren't using like a Webpack or any type of a JavaScript bundler the ability to use this just by a um, JavaScript source uh, tag in your HTML. But we're not, we're not going to do that. So you can see that in commonly um, with other packages that are more robust and than this one, of course, which most are, uh, people, they, they give them multiple options in terms of how they choose to install it. Um, we're just going to give them the NPM version. So then we'll say then. Um, and if you want to show in Markdown multiple code lines, you can use these three back ticks and anything inside of it will be your little code. Uh, and then it's just going to show you usage. You know, how do you use it? So what you would do, I'm going to paste this in real quickly. This is just a demo and we'll demo this in a real project too, after we get it on NPM, then that's basically how you use it. All right. And then you can also specify options. So shadows are supports, uh, two options, both of which are optional. Of course, shadow type hard and soft. These right here, just make this in markdown, these little uh, underscores, this part will be, um, italicized. So you'll see. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. Now we're ready to push this to GitHub. So we will get this up and open. And so we're going to say get init. All right. And then we're going to do git uh, add all. And then we're going to get commit first commit. All right. So it's going to add these two files. We need to go back to our uh, right here. We're going to copy this and then we're going to run this line right here and then get push you origin mastered. I put in my password. You're going to have to set this stuff up yourself if you haven't done that yet. And now we can refresh this and there we go. So now we can see NPM ice shadow wizard save, then import blah, blah, blah. Now, nobody can actually do this yet because we haven't pushed it to NPM. And before we can actually publish it to NPM, we have to have a package.json file. So uh, we will do um, NPM init. And it's going to ask us a series of questions, the package name, the version. This uses what's called Semver. All right. So for the first one right here, the first decimal, it's the major version. Um, when you make uh, incompatible API changes, so these are major breaking changes. Um, the next one right here is based on the minor version when you want to add functionality in a backwards compatible manner. Um, and then finally right here, this is the patch version when you make backwards compatible bug fixes. All right, so we're just going to leave it at 1.0.0 description, add awesome shadows for the non designer. <laughs> I don't know. Entry point is index.js. That's the file that we have right there. And then test command, we're going to emit this GitHub repository. So we already did that. Therefore, it's going to put this in it for us um, automatically. Keywords, um, you know, shadows, I don't know. Author, Gary Simon license. We can leave that there. Is this okay? Hit enter. Yes. All right. So now we have our package JSON file and now we can run NPM and publish. All right. So I wanted to show this error um, mainly because this is, this is something that you may run into, not the first time running this, but Shadow Wizard cannot be republished until 24 hours have passed. So notice republished. When I was setting this tutorial up, I used the same name. So what we'd have to do is just go to package.json, Shadow Wizard. Um, uh, I'll just call it Wizard Re. There we go. So now if we go back, wrong one, there we go, and we run npm publish, now that we have a new name, it's going to work this time. There we go. So shadow, shadow wizard wreath. That's what we're using. Um, so now if we go to NPM JS, NPM JS, and we type in shadow wizard re, it is there immediately for us to use. And we can see the markdown, uh, the readme.md file with our options and all that stuff. Probably could be styled a little bit better than that. But now we can see also because we 
specified um, the GitHub repo that's a part of this in the package JSON. This is the GitHub page for it where people can go and learn how to use it. So now let's actually use this uh, as we would a regular end user. All right, so let's go ahead over to here. We'll make a new directory. Um, we'll call it shadow tester and we'll CD into shadow tester. And we will go ahead and we'll do npm init hyphen y just to answer yes to all this stuff. And then we're going to install it based on, on the installation. So it's npm i shadow wizard re. So this, by the way, this readme file would have to be updated because I, I changed that uh, from shadow wizard to shadow wizard re, no big deal. And then save it as a dev dependency. All right, this code period will open us up. All right, so we have our node modules. We can see Shadow Wizardry right here. All right, very simple stuff. All right, so now um, we'll go ahead and create just an index.html file. All right, uh, let's go ahead and we're gonna have to have a couple images, obviously, for this to work correctly. Um, I'll just put in some placeholder image graphic right here. Now notice I've added class shadow wizard, all right, because that's what the code looks for on these two elements. Um, also, we're gonna use the parcel bundler for this. So source equals, this is gonna go to our own custom index.js file, it has nothing to do with the one in here, of course. Um, and we'll save this. We'll create index.js in our own project. And inside of here, this is uh, how we use it, which is in the um, the GitHub readme.md as well. So import shadow wizard from shadow wizard re. All right, so now we can just call it. So shadow wizard, and we can put in shadow type is soft. You can put in anything or just omit this the way we've had it set up. The only one that it will look for specifically is if it's hard. We'll change that and we'll update the value. Uh, padding, which we'll is put by default, it's false. Let's we'll just do true. And that's all. That's how we use it. <laughs> World's most simple project ever. Uh, let's view the terminal real quick. And I we're going to use parcel for this, like I said. So if you don't have parcel, um, npm i uh, parcel and then uh, hyphen G. I already did that though. After that's done, parcel index.html. All right, so now it created a dist folder. And if we click here, control click, guess what? Ta-da, we have done it. Notice the padding that it adds is on, on these ugly placeholder graphics uh, and our shadow. So then, uh, if I move this over, for instance, and we come here, let's get this out of the way. Yeah, if we come here and we t change this to hard, if I can type, there's our hard, ugly shadow. And then um, let's put that back to soft. And we'll make this false. So there we go. It just gets rid of that. And that's exactly how you would go about using this. Uh, to create your own packages in NPM. All right, so hopefully you learned a lot there and we just scratched the surface. There's obviously a lot more robust packages and a lot more different things you can do, such as testing and all that. Uh, but hopefully as a beginner you know, intro, that was good enough. So if you did like it, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.